You can get 100% linen, you know, going to the store, but then if it's dyed and it has a color, they're not, you know, they might not be disclosing what chemicals are in those dyes. And that's usually where all the chemicals are. Welcome to Holy Chits. I am your host, Christy Austin, here to remind you that you are whole, just the way that you are. Also, chit, a Sanskrit word for pure consciousness, the reason that I started this podcast to raise the collective consciousness. Thank you for being here. I am super excited about today's guest. Today's guest Someone I just met a few months ago, but right off the bat, we started talking about different healing modalities. Five hours later, we're like, what? We've been talking about this stuff for five hours. We definitely connected on a spiritual level. I have so much to share with you today. He is an artist, an expert textile materials, the clothes that we wear on our bodies. I'm super excited to introduce Asher Sinclair. Asher Sinclair, <laughs> please share with us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what got you on this textile journey, and um, it's just a, a little bit, I know that when I say tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, that's like a loaded question because we could go on and on. So tell us a little bit, just a little, a little tad bit about what got you started on this uh, healing journey. Absolutely. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you for having me on the podcast. It's a pleasure and an honor. My name is Asher Sinclair. I'm a digital eco artist and I create designs for my photographs and I digitally print them onto natural, uh, ethical and sustainable natural eco textiles. And uh, my journey has evolved. So I also encompass a lot of what's kind of considered biohacking or uh, just body enhancement. Uh, that has come through this journey at the same time and through the textiles that's kind of blossomed this journey even even more but it's kind of been basically evolving just like we always are uh, but that's basically where I'm at right now and things are evolving and changing currently as well I'm in a big shift in my my whole human experience so uh, yeah let's let's continue in but I'm excited to talk about ethical and sustainable natural textiles and of course marrying them to our skin yes I love that thank you for being here and I feel like we're all uh, getting these downloads and this huge energetical shift with our planet right now right well, we did just have a big shift and I think we're all feeling that so um, I'm excited about this new journey that we're all sharing together yes so the the textiles have you always been interested in textiles or like what started you on that? Yeah, journey? yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, what really started my journey is more of my love and, and connection with the natural world or nature. I like to call it the wilderness uh, as I've evolved on my journey, especially through Ayurveda that we are nature we're made up of all the elements that we um, observe and uh, kind of participate in with nature so i like to say the wilderness so my connection and and uh, basically just my whole human experience with the natural world so it evolved really from photography my love of photography and uh, just as a child i was always out in in the wilderness hiking i loved hiking and exploring uh, but photography and picking up picking up the camera allowed me to meditate really on a lot of the things in the natural world, flowers. I, I always was you know really intrigued with getting up close and taking macro shots and of flowers and things like that. Always caused a little bit of an issue sometimes on summer vacations because uh, my father, who was really into history, wanted me to kind of document more of the experience and having picture pictures of. Uh, people and things like that, kind of more of a photojournalistic aspect, um, which I, you know, I appreciate, but I just found myself just really submersing myself 
uh, just more in the natural world and really being intrigued and fascinated. Uh, so it evolved from there. Uh, in high school, I got more into black and white photography. That's right when uh, digital was becoming more and more prevalent in our lives, digital photography. But I was right at that kind of last cusp of, of having my own dark room and developing my own film and photography in the dark rooms, so doing a lot of black and white photography. So it evolved from there. As I continued on my journey with photography, I did photojournalism. I worked for a local newspaper in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, I photographed weddings and did portrait work, uh, event photography. I did uh, commercial photography, all sorts of different types of photography. But really, my true love was photographing the natural world and photographing just all the elements that really inspired me in that in that respect. So. Uh, I went and I wanted to take my art and bring it off of the wall. And I was trying to find ways to do that. I first tried ceramic tiles, uh, which I could incorporate in an architectural sense. And then I was introduced to digital textile printing. And that was in 2008. And then it really blossomed in 2011, where uh, I was introduced to a company called Spoonflower, which more people have become familiar with, but really digital textile printing. And then as I was doing that, I was really curious at what textiles I was printing on. I, I had the option of printing on synthetics, uh, things like rayons and polyesters mainly. And I was really looking for a natural material. I was looking for something to really mirror what I was doing and creating with my creations. And that's when I dove in and started finding out more about what organic cotton was and linens and hemp's and uh, things, jute and all sorts. I mean, I've, there's a number of them, wools, and that's how this basically evolved. And then I started diving deeper into the ethical, sustainable aspect of not only what textile, but how they were being produced and really just snowballed into meeting people all around the world uh, that were participating in uh, creating natural textiles. And then how, for me, how to source them, obtain them, and it was really a beautiful just journey and it still is of connecting with individuals that are participating in that space and then finding out more about myself and how it basically marries with me the the whole essence of the natural textiles and what it actually is doing to our bodies as we're wearing up or even too as we have them in our environments in our homes so i'm really all about eco homes to eco lifestyle in that respect and just really building out a relationship with it Right. Yeah. I love that. And you, you, one of your um, pictures is behind you, which I mm -hmm. love that, that you have your artwork behind you. And what yeah. I one thing I love about your artwork is that it's, it has so many layers to it. It's like pictures within pictures. So I, I love your, your artwork. It's just the, the depth of your artwork is amazing, but also I wanted to touch base on what you were talking about, the clothes that we put on our skin. Um, because for me, going through Kundalini Yoga teacher training, that was one of the things we had to wear white cotton, like pure, they said silk or pure cotton, it just like pure materials, um, uh, linen, wool, like you had mentioned. And it's like everyone ran out and got cotton because that's the cheapest, right? So that's mostly what we wore. But I noticed a shift within my yoga practice, wearing just pure cotton, pure white cotton, practicing, doing my meditations, um, how I, my energetic level felt. So you and I started talking about that because I thought, you know, I wasn't ready to shift my entire closet. I'm still, you know, we're, it's a journey, right? We're all on this journey together. So it's like, okay, I'll put a few pieces of linen or wool or pure cotton and um, you and I were talking about it and we got even deeper into the, the people that make those clothes and their energy that goes into that. Mm -hmm. So the clothes we put on our body have layers of layers of energy, not only the material, but the people that are putting their, their work, their sweat, their tears into the clothes. And that energy is also merging with ours. So I thought that was very powerful. And I thought, you know what? I've worked so hard with working on the, the stuff that I put on my body, the makeup that I wear. I learned that most of the makeup that I wear has chemical, you know, horrible 
chemical or cancer causing chemicals within them. I like threw most of this stuff out. And even then it's very extremely difficult to find products that don't have damaging chemicals in them. And then you take that a step further to the clothes that you put on your body that it, can you speak a little bit, um, about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, just like you said, it is a evolutionary process. It was that for me, and and I wouldn't expect it to be any different for any other individual. I mean, unless you were obviously really submersed in it as you know a child and grew up in that type of environment. Uh, but it, and of course, it's really taken me back to connect with a lot of indigenous peoples and indigenous ways of uh, creating things. I've always been connected to that. My father, again, was into he was a history educator um here in arizona and i was we were always taken to places uh different national monuments national parks things like that sacred sites indigenous sites and so i was already building out a relationship and an understanding of indigenous peoples really of the southwest and of course the united states and, and all around the world uh, but it was really more condensed to arizona and the united states and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely more for me. It's definitely a remembering, I feel, than anything. Because as I connect with those things, uh, there's a familiarity, you know, to me, and and it feels comfortable to me, in the sense that I relate to it and it makes sense. And so my journey started out when I was introduced to, like I was saying, digital textile printing and and learning about natural textiles, where I was still wearing and consuming a lot of synthetics uh, on my body. And that was because I was into the outdoors. I was into rock climbing, into whitewater kayaking and mountain biking. And in those particular, you know, environments or communities of people, there's a lot of synthetics that are used in the sense, you know, polyester specifically, uh, just because that's what outdoor gear is made out of. And uh, so I, you know, that was kind of just part of my lifestyle and how I, how I saw myself and just the gear, you know, that we're wearing on our bodies. And so as I was doing that process and working through learning about the natural textiles, it actually wasn't really immediately apparent to me of how it was going to be integrating and, and become part of my lifestyle on my body and through my clothing. So I started a brand with my brother when I moved to Hawaii, Big Island in 2013. And then that evolved uh, for the you know next couple of years, 14, 15, 16. And it, even then, I was still wearing a lot of synthetics. And when you're in Hawaii and in different climates, you know, you're looking for textiles, first of all, that won't mold. Uh, and so I was wearing a lot of like, you know, again, polyesters, but polyesters can also retain and hold a lot of bacteria in them. And can you, you know, a lot of people probably have witnessed this where you get a smell going with with them uh, just from your body odor and things like that. And so I was experiencing those. They wouldn't be molding, but they would have a really interesting smell and also be very clammy in a sense and not really allowing my, bo my body to breathe. But then wearing natural textiles could be kind of tricky because of having to ha you know have that airflow going on so th that you wouldn't you know have the molds and things like that. Uh, there are you know textiles, natural textiles that kind of naturally repel those things. But things like cotton and, and stuff like that, you just have to know how to care for the textile. Because if you don't know how to care for it really and have that relationship with it, then and it, then you're going to get those things. You know, those the the bacteria and and more the molds and stuff will fester. So uh so in that particular period, I was wearing a lot of synthetics and again wasn't as fully aware but as things just i feel like more on my my spiritual journey as i became more in touch with subtle energies and i can talk a little bit more about that as well as my my journey evolved uh think you know feeling into what the textile felt like on my body and you really have to observe uh how your body is breathing how how you, really you feel in your body uh mm -hmm. to actually even be able to understand this on that level because if you are participating in, in kind of more the headspace, mind space, and going about your day and focused on a lot of things outside of your body, then you know you might not see any of the the difference, and you might not even really be aware of it. So you know you could be wearing these things, and also too experimenting. If you don't really experiment and you keep doing, and I think this is a great testament and metaphor to even this podcast and this journey in general, 
is if you don't experiment a little bit, then you really don't know the difference. And you can't really even, you know, determine or make a decision, you know, an educated decision in that respect of what you personally want to wear or what feels better on your skin. So, um, but yeah, as I've evolved too, I've even found that they're called semi-synthetic uh, textiles or, or uh, yeah, semi-synthetic is what they're called, but they're kind of like a blend. They're, they're textiles that you would think uh, they're marketed as being natural textiles, but there's a lot of controversy when you start diving deeper. And one of them is bamboo. Uh, bamboo, the plant itself is very sustainable in how fast that it grows uh, and in the conditions that it grows that, you know, naturally in a lot of places it's growing and it's growing very quickly, can even be harvested very ethically in that respect in, in these, um, you know, smaller communities. But then when it comes to processing bamboo to make it into a textile, that's when there's a tremendous amount of chemicals that are used to break down the cellulose of that, fi you know, and turn it into a fiber. Basically, they have to create it, make it into a pulp. Uh, and then make push it basically bathe it in chemicals to get it stable enough to make it into a yarn to then make it into a textile and th those things you know leaving the textile one you could test it and that is another space that I'm in with actually testing textiles to make sure that they're free from harmful chemicals there's a organization that's called Ucotex certification uh, we're seeing a lot more of it in Targets and Walmarts and things like that. You're seeing garments and sheets, really, that have those certifications. Uh, and so basically, that's the end product, stating and, and sharing with the customer that the product at the end of its life cycle is free from any harmful substances. However, share yeah. Share that again. How do you know when something's been tested? Yeah, so it, there's a certification. It's called Ucotech. So it's O E C O. And then dash T E K. So O E, I'm sorry, O E uh, K O, UCO, and then dash T E X, um, if I'm not mistaken, but UCO Tech certification. And their common one is called the Standard 100 uh, certification. And that one, again, certifies a product from being, being free from harmful chemicals at the end of its life cycle. They have another certification. It's called Made in Green, which we're starting to see more of as well, uh, but it's a little less common. And that's where it's actually certifying the whole supply chain and uh, stating and sharing with the customer that the whole supply chain is ethical, sustainable, and of course, it's free from harmful chemicals as well. So, so that's you know one certification. There are a number of them out there, but that's one that's becoming more popular. The other certification that's really great, but does not test necessarily the chemicals is the GOTS certification. So that's going to be the G-O-T-S, which is the Global Organic Textile Standard. And that's going to be, go that became a lot more popular around when I was being introduced to this space uh, around certain things that were happening in the fast fashion industry uh, and are still happening, uh, but where they're certifying the whole supply chain for being ethical and sustainable. So the those are uh, regulations that they're going, you know, standards that they're going in and the different mills and, and different um, uh, organizations along the supply chain are getting certified so that again, it's, a, it's really a marketing and selling uh, benefit or, you know, to these companies to inform their customers that they're doing it ethically and sustainable just because obviously that's becoming more and more popular. So, but yeah, I was just going to mention real quick with, with the bamboo, um, or in that, in that state that you can have that be at the end of its life, but keeping in mind that process of using the chemicals, uh, and a lot of people just skip the fact that think about the folks, you know, the people that are working with those chemicals in those particular mills that are, you know, basically working with their hands and, and participating in that. And also the inhalation, you know, inhaling. A lot of those things in those spaces uh, too, so that definitely gets uh, kind of forgotten about. Right. I'm glad that there they have uh, ways that we can know uh, if it's certified organic. And there's things now where there wasn't necessarily a few years ago, so yeah. that that's really nice. Also, I want to uh, um, elaborate. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to elaborate what you were talking about with, with when our clothes mold, 
think about if it's molding on the clothes, because I actually experienced that when I went to Costa Rica for my first uh, yoga teacher training, my clothes, it was so moist there that my clothes were actually starting to mold. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? You're growing and molds is crazy. And if it will do that to your clothes and you're wearing them on your skin, it, what do you think that's doing to you? It's merging with your skin. So when you start getting like skin issues, if you have a uh, fungus, athlete's foot, fungus rashes, those are fungus. That's fungus. Same thing. It's mold fungus. Uh, most people think, oh, it's just a rash. Rash is a mold. It's fungus. So um, you think about the things that you would take naturally to, to help with that um, or cure that. That's what you want to, that's what you want to do. If you go the holistic route of taking care of the, the rashes on your skin, but a lot of people don't even correlate that it's the clothes they're putting on their body, mm -hmm. right? That's where you and I talk. It's like, you know, we usually just go to the doctor, give me a cream for this rash I have. You're not correlating. It might be the clothes that I'm wearing. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's also an aspect too with the mold, you know, festering in cottons and things like, you know, other natural materials. Uh, you know, wools are actually more uh, anti-bacterial uh, in that sense, um, where you don't get that as much. But even in the wools, or I mean, in the cottons, uh, I mean, the, on the contrary, I feel like to that, when you are getting the molds, there is, to me, a little bit of a natural sense too, where if the molds are growing, or if it's happening, like, the textile is alive. And I think that's really important to understand with these natural textiles that you know, it's alive and again, wearing something that's alive on your body. So the mold too, being attracted, you know, to a natural fiber does kind of have like a, a fun benefit, I feel like to it, just in the sense that, you know, it's kind of, li it's living, it's growing. And there's a reason, you know, there's a reason why the, I mean, the bacteria is obviously great in, in context, but it's like, there is that side of it too, right? No but, gratitude for the fungus on your body is what you're saying. <laughs> well, right. And, and too, when you get to like, you know, the micro level of our bodies, right? Like we have things even crawling all over our skin constantly that are part, you know, because we're living, breathing, and we're alive. So, you know, there, obviously we, we respect, yeah, we respect the mold, you know, for sure. However, even like you're saying, I lived in, on Big Island. I lived in some places where there was black mold and you know, just like anything, anything in, you know, too much, um, you know, amounts basically can be very, you know, can obviously hinder your health and not be healthy for you. Um, so yeah, it, it's, I, I like to also just when I have conversations, I like to balance out and I like to look at different perspectives, as you can tell, of the situation, because that happened to me, even with sustainable fashion, as I was getting into it, uh, you know, it, looking at just multiple perspectives. So not just as it being like a bad thing. I mean, everything happens for a reason. That's what I honestly believe. I feel like even having synthetics in our lives actually allows us an opportunity to be awoken to the fact that that's, you know, a duality aspect that there's that, and then there's this and, and to experiment and play with it. So, uh, but yeah, when you're talking about skin irritations and people that, you, you know, that, think that maybe it could be something that they're ingesting in their body or something in their environment. Definitely. But like you're saying, I mean, sometimes people overlook the clothes that they're wearing and there are, you know, I've done a lot of research and articles and things talking about folks that are going through a healing journey, especially cancer, uh, where they, for some, you know, some organizations that are assisting individuals through that process, uh, ones that I feel are more conscious will get the synthetics out of their lives and they will be they will be guided to wear actually more specifically linen um in every garment that they're wearing uh just to assist you know with the journey so it kind of everything kind of compounds and is working together so um i was introduced to ayurveda really around 2019 uh and then i integrated it into my life and my lifestyle and then just shortly after I was awoken to an aspect of Ayurveda that's called Ayurvastra. And Ayurvastra is uh, medicinally infused natural textiles. And Ayurvastra is used in India more prominently, not known as much here in the United States or even around the world. But where uh, Ayurvedic doctors in India, if they're working with a patient that has a skin condition or even any kind of condition, but things like rheumatoid arthritis or um, eczema, things like that, where they're not only changing their diet and having people ingest certain, you know, medicinal herbs, plants into their body, 
but they're decking them out in garments that are herbally infused with turmeric. And I have some, some Ayurvastra myself. I sleep with Ayurvastra sheets, one sheet that is infused with 12 different types of holy basil. Uh, wow. I didn't even know that 12 different types of basil even existed. <laughs> Crazy. <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, and then another one that's a, uh, a sandalwood blend. And with some of these organizations, well, one specific, the one that I work with, um, because it's somewhat of a secret, uh, you know, the traditional, traditionally in a sense of what herbs they're infusing them with, it'll be like a sandalwood blend and with 45 other medicinal herbs that are infused in that textile. Um, and it really requires you to be an Ayurvedic practitioner and more actually an Ayurvedic doctor, uh, right. for them to dis- you know, talk with you and disclose that information and, and get something that, that works. But in India, there's hospitals, they've, they've done uh, kind of experiments in that sense where they have in a hospital room made the sheets all Ayurvastra, the floor mats, even the wall coverings and everything and had, you know, profound, uh, you know, benefits and effects with individuals in their recovery and how quick they're recovering. So that's just obviously a true testament to how we can infuse it and have it in our lives. And of course, wearing it. And there's always starting points, you know, I mean, I feel like starting with just literally a, a undyed natural linen can be really powerful. Um, that's what I'm currently wearing right now on my body personally. And the garment that I'm wearing was actually made in Ukraine. I found them off Etsy. And uh, if anybody's, you know, obviously requiring assistance, I can assist in trying to find, you know, garments or assisting people in, in guiding them in a certain direction. But these, uh, my garment that I'm wearing on my top, my shirt is Uko Tech certified. So it's certified all non-toxic. So the dyes that were used to make it kind of the green or sage color that it is, is all non-toxic. My pants are just undyed natural linen. And I do, you know, I love that aspect. So two, yeah, you can get a hundred percent linen, you know, going to the store, but then if it's dyed and it has a color, they're not, you know, they might not be disclosing what chemicals are in those dyes. And that's usually where all the chemicals are. Um, you know, it's fascinating. There's a documentary that's called water blue and it talks about the textile industry being one of the, it is like the most, uh, polluting industry on this planet and it's contaminated all of the major rivers in the world. Um, you know, and so it's, it's something that again, just kind of bringing that awareness there. I don't, I'm not a really big, um, you know, I'm not really big on the fear factor aspect. I'm just more about, okay, what's the alternative? What is, you know, where are there other solutions to the problem? I I like problem solving personally. So. And, and I like that you pointed that out because that's one thing that I always tell people when they buy clothes, wash them first, because what you don't realize is they're putting submerging these clothes in chemicals before they ship them over because they don't want the bugs to get to them. Absolutely. If the bugs are afraid to touch your clothes because they have so many chemicals on them and then you're putting those chemicals on your body, what do you think it's doing to you? So yeah. uh, I always tell people, wash your clothes before you wear. I know people like that fresh, the way it looks when it's fresh. No, wash it. You want to try to get as many, as much as those chemicals off as you can. Also, one thing that I learned recently, and this was so disappointing to me, um, and I, I don't know if I really want to call companies out, let's just say probably the biggest yoga companies you can think of that I have tons of it in my closet. Um, There's what's called forever chemicals that even if you wash it does not leave the clothes. And for some reason, these chemicals have been uh, concentrated in the crotch area of yoga pants, Mm -hmm. knowing that women don't wear underwear usually when they wear yoga pants. I do now whenever I wear these clothes, but you know, cause I still have them in my closet. I couldn't get rid of them mentally. I, I'm working on that. But uh, the fact that these forever chemicals cause cancer, cause thyroid issues, cause kidney disease, it causes all kinds of problems. And we are advertising it to health industry the people who are into going to the gym and working out and being healthy. And those are the people that you're going to target 
with these issues. So there's there's something there. We don't need to go that deep into the into the rabbit hole, but just to bring awareness, the fact that these big companies that are focused on health are putting forever chemicals concentrated in the crotch area of yoga pants. Very disappointing to me. So yeah. I've started shifting out my closet because I do feel a difference when I'm wearing pure cotton linen. It, I do feel a difference. And um, I really appreciate you being on here. We need to have you on here again, because like, you know, there's so much more information that you have. I want you to share your social media accounts, any websites you have, if somebody wants to buy some of your artwork or just get your advice on where to buy sheets that you were talking about that, um, <laughs> that are used with all kinds of goodness, um, where they can reach you, Asher. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is Asher T Sinclair. So A S H E R T S I N C L A I R E dot com. And on there, obviously, there's the contact and it has all my social media actually there. So that's pretty much the best place to go. Uh, but I am on, uh, you know, the social media platforms and, but the best is just to reach out to me through the, through the website uh, and connect and just start the discussion really because you never know where it's going to blossom out and and evolve to once the conversation gets started so uh yeah and of course i you know it, it's a journey you know it's it's wherever someone's coming from and wherever they're at it just meeting them there and then just seeing like you're saying with your own personal wardrobe where you feel comfortable because there's really no reason to obviously traumatize yourself uh, but I'm always about like, once you become aware and then when that feeling comes up where you really feel that you've completed that phase of your life and you're ready to let go of the garments, you know, then of course it's a great time to release them. One practice that I personally like to do is one, gar you know, garments that I'm not ready to maybe release that attachment to because attachment is such a big part of this. You know, we kind of go into kind of the spiritual aspect of it too, of the conversation. Uh, you know, memories and things like that. I mean, those things do get infused into our clothes and, you know, how we feel in them or again, memories that we have with them. I like to take them and put them in a bag and leave them in my closet and kind of take them off the hanger, put them in the bag, put them almost like behind, you know, the scenes, so to speak. And then that way I'm not looking at them to as an option, you know, at that particular time, but I'm also not having that traumatizing, giving them away just yet. I can go back into the bag. I can pull it out, you know, work with it. But I feel like that's a little bit of like bridging that gap of mm -hmm. just kind of taking it easy on yourself, you know, to, to do it in that respect. And then mm -hmm. when you're ready, you know, and you're maybe giving away other things, then you could go ahead and throw that bag in with the other things and, and release it. So, right. right. <laughs> great, great advice. Thank you for sharing that, Asher. I really appreciate that. I'm going to have to start doing that myself, <laughs> but I feel like when we know better, we do better. Right. So it's baby steps. It's learning. This is, it's like, I, I always say the more that I, I think I know the more, or the more that I know, the more I realize I know nothing. So mm -hmm. on this journey, there's just so much and it's like, okay, well now it's time to start doing better. You know, I want to live a long, healthy life. I want my children to live a long, healthy life, start teaching, you know, the, the younger generation, what we know and, you know, and help others as much as we can. Right. So well, yeah, I'm yeah, still absolutely. on the journey myself. My closet is not, you know, pure, you know, cotton and linen and wool yet, <laughs> but right. it it will be someday. I'm, I'm making the journey, the process. So thank you so much for your advice on how you made that transition. And um, I appreciate you so much for coming on today and sharing your experiences with us and uh, so much great information, great websites to look up, things to look into, the sheets. I love that. I'm going to have to talk to you more about that on, on how I can get some of those sheets. Just saying. <laughs> but um, thank you so much, Asher. I appreciate you being here today. I love and adore you. And we will have you on again um, soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Holy Chit with Christy Austin. I will see you next week.